everybody, and welcome to another episode of Leslie Said What. I've been doing this show, y'all, since September 7th of last year, and I still, my heart be like, <laughs> every time it's like, you are now live. <laughs> I still keep freaking out, like, this is new. <laughs> I don't know why. Anyway, just pray for me in Jesus' name. Calm my nerves, Jesus, calm my nerves. And then on top of it, y'all, like... I got this hot chocolate right here, right? And you know how, like, you try to eat the hot, well, not eat the hot chocolate, drink the hot chocolate before all your marshmallows disappear? You should have seen me when it said going live. I was trying to catch the marshmallows, trying to catch them <laughs> before it went live. Yeah, I didn't catch them all, but, oh, well, I guess I get to them. I get to them. I get to them. Anyway, again, welcome to Leslie Said What? Who is all in here? Who in here? Say hello in the comments, guys, so I can recognize you and say, hey, girl, boy, whoever you are, what's up? Okay, so be sure to say something in the comments, okay, and join the conversation. Because tonight, y'all, we got another juicy topic for you. Mm -hmm. Tricky women from the Bible. And I mean tricky women doing some tricky things. <laughs> Sorry, okay. A little high on the sugar. The hot chocolate, y'all. It's the hot chocolate. <laughs> Anyway, be sure to say hey in the chat, in the comments, and um, join the conversation. All right? So tonight is our last and final part of the tea from the Bible series, okay? And for those of you who don't know what I mean by the tea, the tea, y'all, is simple. It's like the juicy stuff. You know how, like, you be like, girl, tell me the tea, girl. Tell me the tea, that's what tea is, okay? It's like, you know, the juicy the juicy news, all right? Like, what's up, what's going on? That type of thing. So what we're going to do tonight is talk about tricky women in the Bible. So that, that tea, okay? Now, there's a reason we've been doing this segment from the Bible. And the reason why is because I want people to understand, bro, ain't nothing you've done. Ain't nothing nasty you done did because, you know, some people done done some nasty things. But there ain't nothing too nasty. You ain't too messed up. You ain't too crazy. You ain't too nothing, nothing to come to Jesus, okay? Just like, you know, that's why the Lord got all these kind of crazy people in the Bible that he pours their tea, their tea for us to understand and to learn and grow from and realize we ain't alone. We ain't alone, y'all. We ain't alone. Real quick, let's look at the chat, comments, whatever you want to call it. It's better than it saying you are dead. <laughs> Truth. <laughs> I guess it is good to be live than dead. Uh, my, yes, you should see me, Michelle. I'm in here. Like, I'm still, like, eyeballing them as I'm talking to y'all. Like, bruh, I, I really want to get my marshmallows. So you may see me take a sip, a sip, a.k.a. try to catch a marshmallow throughout the midst of this. I'm just saying. I'm just being honest, right? I'm being honest. Uh, hey, Sherry girl. How are you, girl? Okay. Hey, Ness. Uh, so, yeah, y'all, being a little transparent, you know, my hot chocolate chasing these marshmallows. Anyway, anyway, so like I said, the reason for the topic we've been talking about is because I want people to understand there's nothing that you've done. There's nothing that you can do that will keep you out of the hand of God, that will keep you out. Of the hand. Yeah, I said that right. I said that right. Uh, anyway, um, the scripture in Hebrew says that... Jesus is tempted in everything we've done. So anything that we try to hide from him, ain't no sense of hiding it. He was tempted. He just ain't sinned with it, but he's been tempted with it. So don't beat yourself up, okay? Because Jesus was tempted with it. He was tempted with it, all right? And then in James 5, 16, in sharing our tea, okay, not spilling our tea, but in pouring our tea with purpose, not being reckless by spilling it. You know, spilling it, somebody get burned, somebody gets hurt. You're reckless when you spill tea. But if you pour tea, there's a purpose behind it. So, again, what James 5.16 is saying here, confess your faults one to another and pray for one and pray one for another that you may be healed. So in the sense of when we share our tea, we can grow, heal and do better because I don't know about you. I don't know about y'all. But when that tea is in there, you know, the stuff that you done done, that you don't want nobody to know you done done. It's all up in here. Right. And then they start eating at you. Right, it starts eating at you, and you just don't you can't, you can't get away from it because every time you turn around, your past keep coming at you and and hitting you in the face and slapping you and, and punching you and all kinds of stuff. Right, so it's important, guys, to let go of the tea, share the tea, pour the tea, 
confess your faults one to another that you may be healed because I can guarantee that somebody else done done it. They just ain't got caught yet. Just saying. It is what it is. He was out the sin, cast the first stone. Right? So again, pour that tea, y'all. Pour that tea. Do it. Get one. <laughs> oh, it do. It do. Your tea, that stuff you done done that you don't think nobody know about be coming out, yo. It be coming at you. So that's why it's important to pour your tea because somebody else may have been through what you've been through. They just don't want to share it because, you know, they ashamed. But if they see that you are and that you've grown and you've gotten through it and you've come on the other side and Jesus still love you and Jesus forgave you, then they'll, they'll do the same. Pour your tea, y'all. Pour the tea. Pour the tea. Pour the tea. So just like every week when I have been talking about the tea, I'm going to show my little video and put my hat on. It's so cute, ain't it? It's so cute. Well, this is the last day that we're going to be doing the tea, y'all. This is the last day we're going to be doing the tea because this is part three. Oh, and the final part of the tea, because I want you guys to understand that like this is just for me to introduce it to you and then for you to go and read for yourself, to find yourself in the Bible, to see yourself in the Bible. I know that sounds weird. You're like, what girl? What you saying? You crazy. You drink too much hot chocolate. No, what I'm saying is, is that the tea that has been poured in the Bible for us to drink from, to learn from, is things that people probably in the Bible days were severely ashamed for, but God poured their tea out with a purpose through the word of God for us to lean and green from it. He like, look, you, you so, what well, it was hosing the Bible. It, it, you did something nasty. They did something nasty in the Bible. Like, and they grew and God still used them. And so wait for it. Tonight, y'all, is about to be lit. It's about to be lit. You're going to be like, what? That's in the Bible? I'm like, yeah, y'all, it's in the Bible. T, y'all, the T, the T, the T. Y'all wait till y'all hear this. I'm telling you, wait for it. Okay, because I'm gonna bring it all the way around. You gonna be like, say what, girl? Say what, girl? So there's a reason I saved this one to last. Okay, this is the part three and final part of the series because, I, like I said, from now on, I want you to read and you define. And like I said, find yourself. So find your story, find your tea through somebody in the Bible. Look at that. You see how I said that? Oh, that girl bad. That that girl bad. That girl bad. Okay, so <laughs> so let me go ahead and show you. That hat goes great with the marshmallow. Seriously, love the hat. Thanks, girl. Thanks, girl. I don't even remember where I got this from to tell you. Um, anyway, so like I said, what we're going to be talking about today is tricky women. So there are two tricky women I want to talk about real quick, real quick, real quick. All right, because I'm not going to be before you long. And I ain't saying that like, you know, the preachers be saying, I ain't going to be before you long. And then an hour later, they ain't still preaching. No, I legit ain't going to be before you long. I'm just saying, okay? All right. So what we're going to talk about is Lot's daughters. Anybody know about Lot's daughters? A lot of times we hear stuff, right? We hear all kinds of stuff about Lot's wife. And you know how she turned around. Everybody remember her. She like probably like, girl, okay? I know y'all remember me. All right? Stop. Just chill. Leave me alone. All right? She probably like, leave me alone, y'all. Well, we all remember Lot's wife. Okay? And so, you know, everybody talk about her. But don't nobody talk about the daughters. And they did something nasty. They did, y'all. They did something terrible. For those of y'all who don't know, I'm about to blow your mind because this is legit in the Bible. You wait, you ready? I told you. I waited, saved this for last for a reason. All right. So, you know how Lot and them came up out of Sodom and Gomorrah? So, y'all know that part probably. I hope so. And, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah was where all the sin and all the nastiness and all the other kinds of stuff was going on, right? So, the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, but he gave Lot a chance to get out. So he was like, Lot, bro, I'm going to need you to take your peoples and get up out of here. Get up out of here. Get up out of here. So Lot took off, y'all. He took off running. He took off running. And they said, he, him, his daughters, and his wife. And, and the Lord was like, don't look back, Lot. Don't look back. And and and, and the wife, she was just like, I got to look back. I got to look. You know, she, she, she didn't want to. I guess she did, y'all. And she ended up looking back. And it turned into a pillow of salt. Sure enough. Well, then, you know, so the girls is like, daddy. Oh, daddy, we done left our home, all right? We living up in the mountains now because we don't ran. Because I said he took off running. And we in the mountains, daddy. What we going to do? Ain't no husband for us to marry. We ain't going to bear no children. The lineage of you, daddy, going to die with us. 
we need to have some kids or something or something something so y'all let me tell you what they did you ready for it let me tell y'all what he did they got their daddy drunk they got pregnant by him i ain't even kidding so they done ran up out the city because god had destroyed it took off running and hid up in the mountains right got up in the mountains got up in the mountains got the daddy drunk because they thought hey we got to survive. We got to make sure we got somebody to carry on the heritage. You know, we got to produce an heir. You know, those type of things, you know, like like in the British and in the kingdoms and things where they're like, produce an heir, produce an heir, produce an heir. So that's what they had to do, y'all. They had to produce an heir. Mm-hmm. So they got their daddy drunk. Genesis 19, 31 to 38. For somebody think I done got this from a Lifetime movie. No, nah, I ain't get this from a Lifetime movie. And ain't no Tyler Perry special either. This is from the Bible. Legit. Mm-hmm. Got their daddy drunk and got pregnant by him. Mm-hmm. Show me off. So they can survive. So the, their people can survive. That's what they did. Y'all got pregnant, right? Both of them. Both of them. Both his daughters. And then, so they produced, so the first daughter had a son and named him Moab. Moab. So I know you probably don't heard about the Moabites. Moabites. Moabites in the Bible. Yeah, that's where that came from. And then Amon was the, the, the second daughter. She had him. So two, two, two babies by their daddy. Two babies by their daddy. Then that's incest on steroids. Incest on steroids. Like what the what? Show enough, y'all. Show enough. Anyway, so if you don't know this, wait for it now. You could be like, you say, what now, girl? How you bring that round like that? How you bring that round like that, girl? Let me show you how I brought that round. So let me tell you. I told you the first daughter that got pregnant by the daddy, okay? She, she had Moab. And that's where the Moabites come from, right? Get this. You know Ruth, right? Y'all know Ruth? Y'all know Ruth? Ruth in the Bible. You know, got a whole book of the Bible. Ruth. Ruth, y'all. Ruth is a Moabite. What'd that girl say? Yeah, that's what I said. She a Moabite. Show enough she came from that. Show enough. Ruth, they got a whole book in the Bible, y'all. A whole book in the Bible. Okay, that the the Lord gave a whole book in the Bible is a Moabite. She came from the incest of Lot's daughters messing with the daddy and getting pregnant by him. That's her lineage. That's where she came from. Shut up, Leslie. You just said that. Yeah, girl, I just said that. Show enough. And you know how the last week when we talked about the prostitutes with the purpose, Rahab, Rahab was Boaz's mama. Because you remember in the book of Ruth now, she was a Moabite now. I told you, she a Moabite. She came from Lot's daughter sleeping with their daddy. And then Rahab, who was a prostitute, okay, had Boaz. Boaz marries Ruth. They do the do. Boaz and Ruth get married, have a baby named what? What's the baby? Obed. Ready? They had a baby named Obed. Wait for it. Y'all wait for it. Wait for it. Obed had Jesse. Jesse was David's daddy. King David. What? Yes. King David. Mm-hmm. And guess what? All of them. Ruth, the one that came from incest. Rahab. No. Oh. The prostitute. All of them in the lineage of Jesus. What? Yes, girl. They all related to Jesus. They all was related to Jesus. I ain't even playing. Look at God. He letting you know you ain't too trifling. No, you ain't too trifling. No, you ain't too nasty. No, bro, you ain't. And to be related to Jesus. Tell me that I won't preach. Tell me that won't preach. And let me go a little further. So I told you, Rahab the hook. No, no, the prostitute. And then, and then, all right, Boaz, okay, was her son, Rahab's son. Boaz marries Ruth, who came from incest. They get married, have Obed. Obed had Jesse. Jesse had David, okay? All of these people is related to Jesus. That's why you like, in the Bible, you like such and such begot this person, this person begot that person. You know, like, you like, Lord, the genealogies, where it's like, this person is this person, daddy, that person, that person, daddy. And you're like, okay, Lord, what's the point of this? So you can see, y'all, that it don't matter where you came from, how you got here, when you got here, 
how you got here, if it was nasty, no matter what you did, the Lord forgives you. Okay, it don't matter what your tea is. Okay, and I told you Rahab tea, she was a hoe. All right, Ruth's tea, well, she came from incest, from a girl sleeping with her daddy. Okay, all right. And then they had Obed and Obed had David and David was a man after God's own heart. I don't know if you heard that phrase before. I don't know if y'all heard that phrase before where it says David is a man after God's own heart. You're like, oh, so David must have been amazing. He must have been like, like good, good. He must have done all kinds of good things in the name of Jesus. Nah, bro, that ain't the case. Yeah, David was a man after God's own heart. Yeah, David was bomb.com in God's eyes. But guess what? David cheated on his wife. Not only did he cheat on his wife, he got the girl he cheated with pregnant, got her baby daddy killed, married her, had a baby by her, wanted to cover it up, and the baby died. Like, the what? What? Like, what? Again, all of these people, they got all kinds of tea, all kinds of tea, all kinds of tea, all kinds of strong tea, y'all, strong tea. And God used them for a mighty purpose. He used them for a mighty purpose. And not only that, he put them in his lineage of his son, Jesus. Like what? And I can keep going on and on and on and on of all these people. Because, you know, David and the chick he cheated with also had Solomon, King Solomon, which we all know about, temple and stuff. Like, come on, bro. It just keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. Read the T, y'all, in the Bible. I promise you, you're going to see something either that you've done that you shouldn't feel guilty about anymore because you've seen it in the Bible. Or you're going to see something that's worse probably than what you feel you've done. And God's like, Psh! Bruh, you think that's bad. Let me show you something. Let me show you what such, such and such did and what such and such did. What lots of daughters did. The tricky women, the tricky women doing tricky things with the daddy up in the mountain. Like, what? What? Again, these stories go on and on and on. You would be surprised at some of the stuff that's in the Bible. Ain't nothing new. Guaranteed. You ask me something, I bet you I can find it. I bet you I can find it in the Bible. You like, girl, it ain't in the Bible. Mm -hmm. I can find it. Just saying, there's nothing you've done, guys. No, no way you've messed up that's bad. No way that you've messed up that God can't forgive, that you can't come back to him. Even if you were here once and you're like, bro, I'm, I'm out. I've been out for like four, 10, 15 years. I'm out, bro. You can come back. It's never too late. Every day above ground is an opportunity to get it right. You ain't dead yet. You ain't dead yet. All right. Let's look at the chat real quick. Uh, yep, that's what's happened. Ooh, these girls be bad. Michelle, <laughs> you're hilarious. Oh, I like that. Find your tea. Yes, your tea is in the Bible. You just have to find it, y'all. Like something you've done, you can see yourself in the Bible and the tea that you've done in the Bible. Yes. Um, they got him drunk because he would have said no for sure. Uh, yeah. Mm hmm Yeah, you, Michelle. <laughs> Girl, you're hilarious. <laughs> yeah, he, he would have said no, bro. He, he, he would have I hope he would have said no. Um, ooh, we, they would have made headline news this day and time. Girl, who you telling Ness, right? A long line of toxicity and drama. Yes, Ness to the point of redemption legit you never know what or who your child will become say that again michelle preach um keeping it all in the family is an understatement you ain't you never lied ness yep nancy all in the family Woo! say that michelle high five high five or high ten right because it's two hands. Ten. Hi, ten. Hi, ten. that's what's up michelle so true so so true so yeah so this is gonna, going to conclude our tea series, y'all, because I don't want to tell you all the tea. I don't want to go like part four, part five, part 10, part 15, because we can go on forever finding the tea in the Bible that we can learn and grow from and see ourselves in. And that ain't my job. That ain't my job. In 2 Timothy, I think it's 2.15, it says study to show thyself, thyself approved. Don't be coming over here. 
Okay, y'all need to learn for yourself. I'm just telling you the tea is in there and that you can find your tea in the Bible and see yourself in the Bible. If you find it, I'm just saying, okay, just putting that out there. Uh, amen. And your walk to get to know God may be different, but be thankful for the walk. And Ness, look at you, girl. Don't make me run in this house. I live in an apartment, Ness. If I take off running, somebody going to call the popo. Okay, you will make me run, girl. I felt it. I felt it, Ness. I felt it. Anyway, so like I said, y'all, find your tea in the Bible. Find yourself in the Bible. It's in there. You in there. If it ain't something you've done, it's probably something you feel is worse than what you've done. And God still used them. Use them for a purpose. I can't say it enough, y'all. I can't say it enough. No, Lord, I can't say it enough. I can't. All right. So again, this concludes our part three. Now I'm going to kick off a new series. So I just, so this concludes the Bible, the T in the Bible series. Next, not next week, because I'll be in LA. What? Yeah, this girl going to LA next week. So I won't be here next week. But the following week, Lord's will, I should be here. And I'm, if not, I may do a little something, something in the middle of next week because, you know, y'all going to miss me on Monday not being here. So I may do a little something then. But anyway, oh, hold on. One more comment. A teacher does assign homework. So what we need to study tonight so we are ready for next week. You're hilarious. Yeah. Like, well, the thing is, is you can study for e- on and on and on. This should be a repetitive thing, y'all. Y'all got to study all the time. Okay. Find the tea, y'all. Find the tea. Oh, <laughs> June, <laughs> right? They ain't gonna know what hit him, June. They ain't gonna know what hit him. Um, anyway, so like I said, next week I won't be here, but I may do something midweek. I'll let you know. We'll see how it go. We'll play it by ear, y'all. We'll play it by ear. Um, but definitely be sure to continue to tune in. I appreciate y'all's support. Um, if you didn't see my post and you'd like me and my band and my worship leader. I don't even want to say my, because they're not mine. They belong to Jesus, but we all work together as a team to come and bless your audience. You let us know. All right. God bless y'all. Thank you so much again for all of your support. I hope you enjoyed the show tonight and I hope you continue to watch. God bless. I am out.